Now, if you want to stick around, we're going to do a quick q and I have to do this quick because I have to leave Houston and get it back to El Paso. So let me answer any question I can potentially answer for you quickly. And we'll go from there. So Q&A. What do we got? Hi, TND, Desla. You off, DD? See you soon. Digital Dave. Is Digital Dave here? Me and Digital Dave have, uh, we are cornering the market on green screens. This is actually my mom's uh, basement. All right. Same thing with my pool, just a green screen, mom's basement. <laughs> you know, you're watching fake news and the clown looks like people. That's a real deal. Hey, Tesla. Ah, oh, beauty days here. You know, I've also got to give more uh, wrenches out to moderators. If you want to be a moderator, uh, just put in there, I'd like to be a moderator. And if I've seen you around for enough time, I'll give you the wrench. And you can start, you know, shutting trolls down. There's not that many trolls on, on my channel. It's pretty cool. There are some. And I, it's, sometimes it's fun. When Geo Metro, I got to tell you, that was my first, that was my first vehicle in college, a Geo Metro and it, a white 92 Geo Metro got 55 miles to the gallon. Don't laugh because I'm sure people right now would love to have that car, especially with the gas prices. Although here in Houston, it was like, uh, I went to the gas station, $4.35, pretty good. <laughs> we'll giddy up and go. I should go actually. What about Roger? What about Roger Veer? Good guy. Nice guy. Had him on the show. I know people got ticked off him because of the Bitcoin cash thing. I got to tell you, he's done more for Bitcoin and crypto than uh, uh, a lot of these fakers have done in their entire time frame. He's like the real deal. Uh, and you know what? Q always got a good point. Spot ETF will help bring crypto to the mainstream and open up for institutions flooding. And he's very, you are correct. Sir, ma'am, the only thing is just remember this. The institutions taketh, uh, the institutions giveth and they taketh away. So just remember that all this money that's flowing in, we want that. We love it when it comes in, but we hate them when they take it out. And guess what institutions are really good at? Especially Wall Street. Wall Street's really good at this. Is uh, uh, buying low, selling high, and uh, a little bit of manipulation. So just be aware of what you're getting into. That's why I'm not, I'm not smart enough to figure those guys out. I just dollar the cost average. Uh, Sam Chung. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess. It does make it mainstream. You, are, you guys are all correct. Can we stake our ADA on Ledger? Hmm. I don't know, but I got a great video in the description. It's for my stake pool, though, because uh, I'm super biased. You can watch that video and you can take all your aid off of the exchanges, stake it with DNews or somebody else. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Just take it with somebody. Help support the network. And uh, I show you how to actually take it off exchanges and how to choose the right uh, staking pool. Again, it's up to you. And ADA, yes, can be stored in the ledger. I know that for a fact. I have some. I will ban the, <laughs> I will ban the trolls. Can I ask your thoughts on container? Man, this is like the fifth time I keep asking that. I got to do a deep dive. Very busy. Sorry, everybody. And uh, let's see. What's this? With transaction fees and taking Bitcoin off exchange, is there a dollar amount threshold you have as a rule of thumb before sending it to your ledger? No. Um, see, it just depends. Like, if you're buying $10 a week in Bitcoin, you probably want to wait a little bit before you take it off the the exchanges because the fee will just eat you up if it's ten dollars to buy and the fee is eight bucks what's the point right so even if you even if the exchange went insolvent and and locked you down you'd be like well what i lose two dollars of the bitcoin i think i'll be okay so it's just one of those things that just, you just have to kind of play it by ear and every exchange is different and that's why i have a a spreadsheet uh, that you can look at. It says link in the description. I can't bring it up right now, but it'll just show you all the exchanges that I use. And yes, everybody asks me, I still use Voyager. But remember, just like I have been talking about, oh, you can't say it. Great. Just like I've been talking about 
for here. Uh, the rules, see those rules underneath me? Five rules to, that I live by. You can adopt them if you want. Uh, just assume it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose because if you do, recipe for disaster. So just assume it's all gone. You won't uh, feel, feel bad about it. Especially, and it, it helps you to gauge something. If you have your entire net worth, you're like, I'm going to put it all on BitTorrent. I feel real good about this. This is my entire life savings. If you can say it in the back of your mind, okay, it's all gone, would you invest into it? And if it gives you pause, probably not a good idea. Next one, everything's a scam. And the third one, the most important, try to shoot for 0% on exchanges. I have a minimum of uh, 3%. That's the, or actually, that, that's the maximum I try to leave on any one exchange. And it saved my bacon a lot of times, especially with Celsius. So don't leave too much on exchanges. Put them on your ledger. Don't use leverage. The three L's, right? Uh, ladies, liquor, and leverage. That's the three ways that men get destroyed. Uh, so 25, 50X is just ridiculous for me. And of course, along the way, if you're going to dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out and take those profits. It's not so daunting as time goes on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes. Yes, BK. Moving all my crypto to a hard wallet. Not much skin. And if you're having problems with that, trying to figure that out, like how, did, how do I do that? There's a website. It's called danteachescrypto.com. It's free. It's 100% free. It's always been free and always will be free. Just go to module two. Let me just I'll show you. Let's go to this module. Well, first go to Dan Teaches Crypto. Sign up. Let's go to this module, module two safety. And I just show you what's a crypto wallet, uh, what's a public private key, setting up your ledger setting up your ledger live app, transferring crypto assets from exchange wallet. I show it to you all today. And that's exactly how I do it. So hopefully that helps. Uh-oh. Well, this is something to look for. Roger Vere owns CoinFlex, 47 million USDC, looking at both Rogers and CoinFlex Twitter handle, and both accusing each other. Man, things are falling apart. See? Ooh, this is a good question. Rob, do you think there will be another four-year cycle? Great question. So here's my theory. And I, I talk about this a lot. So sorry if you've heard this. But so far, it's hang true. Four-year cycles. It all starts with the Bitcoin halving. The first one was 2012. Then it comes an all-time high, 2013. Then there's like a dip and a reset, 2014, 15. And then it happens again. In 2016, there's a halving. Remember that all-time high? Ooh, 19,500, which we just saw Bitcoin at 17,600, so whatever. Then there's a dip, and there's a reset, or as some people call it, crypto winter. And then guess what? It's happening again. In 2020, there was a halving. 2021, we had the all-time high. I thought we're going to go higher in 2022, extended cycles. Me and Ben both thought it. Ben came up with it, but I just thought it was right. It wasn't right. And it was still, I was wrong, and the four-year cycles are still intact. We had a huge dip, and, I, and we're in crypto winter. Sorry, we are, and, we're, and it's going to go, I think it's still going to go lower. That's why I'm only dollar cost average every week. Then it's going to be reset in 2023 when we can hopefully start accumulating, especially when the Fed pivots, and it'll just start again. Having in 2024, probably an all-time high 2025, 26, and 27. Now, is that guaranteed? Absolutely not. But so far, in the last 12, 14 years, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Four, eight, ah, there we go, 11 years, 11 years. So far, it's been right. It hasn't changed. There's no deviation. So, I mean, it's right until it isn't. All right. Harvey, hi, Dan, did you exit your risk your positions or do you hold them? I sold some of the cryptos that just weren't doing anything for me because they just were just dragging me down. So I sold those, but remember I was, it wasn't a hard choice because remember I was dollar cost averaging from 2018 and 2019 where everything was super low. So I didn't see them hitting anything great. So I just sold them. So did you exit? Yes, I did. I just didn't see the point and that's it. I got, I got to tell you, I had a hard time selling in the last, in my, uh, uh, previous cycles, but 
not these days. It just gets easier. Mm. Rob, if you could only invest in one altcoin, who would you go with? USDC. <laughs> ah, that's a lame answer. I don't know. I mean, some people say, well, Ethereum, because it's going to go great and it's got so much first mover advantage. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. Uh, Friendster had my uh, first mover advantage and then came MySpace. MySpace had first mover advantage and then come, and came uh, Facebook. That seems to do okay. Blockbuster had a first mover advantage and there's only one left in Bend, Oregon, apparently. So, I no, I, I'm not, I don't have much faith in, in uh, Ethereum as much as I used to, especially with the this merge getting delayed again, but who knows? I don't know. I like, uh, I like StormX. I like uh, Cardano. I like Polkadot. I like Nier just because it's built, Sweatcoin's building on it. I like all these things. <laughs> Good day in a right. I don't even know. I haven't done the deep dive, so I can't see it. Thanks for asking. Okay. Yes. Great question, Jackie. Do you keep USDS in your ledger? Yes. As opposed to, well, you, we're talking about the stable coin? The stable coin's in the ledger. It was on Voyager, but I had to take it off because mm, it's risky. So I had to take it off into my ledger. Now, you can convert USDC to dollars and put it to your bank. The thing is, though, is that do you have a bank that questions your every move, especially if you have a lot of money floating around? I do. So I don't like to convert it to dollars and send it to my bank, have it just sit there, even though it's FDIC insured. It's always the questions. So I put it over. Ooh, David, great question. This will be the last one. I got to get out of here. My wife's going to kill me. Uh, are you still navigator status? Yes. So for Voyager, there is one caveat. I can't sell my Voyager tokens because that gives that navigator status. And I, you know, if I was... If I could see a little bit better, I probably could have sold it and then uh, got it back much cheaper because that's just the right way to do it. But I'm just not selling it at this point. And, I'm, you know, it's a, probably a bad move in all honesty. So it's just the truth. I probably should have sold it, but I haven't. That's what's up. So there you go, everybody. Rob is not, not perfect. He screws up every so often. All right, everybody. So look, that's it for today. I got to get out of here. So I got a long drive ahead of me, uh, me and the wife and the grandson. We got to get out of here. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate everybody. And uh, if you want to be, you know what? If you want to be a, uh, a moderator, just put it in there. I'll take a look in the live chat and add you guys in. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Uh, remember, don't forget to submit those questions for uh, me and Simon Dixon, Bank of the Future. This should be a dynamite one on Thursday. But that's it. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. Uh, like and subscribe. Great stuff. Adios.